and welcome to the EEPROM 9. And from the disc you can see we've been messy. And we have a Commodore Plus 4 PLA. Because as some of you know from my Facebook group, I brought a Plus 4. Now, it came with a few issues which I'm not able to replicate, but needless to say, I fixed it. It was not the processor one, although this processor adapter thing worked, and I'm going to keep hold of it for anything. It comes with a custom ROM, which I've copied, so I can replicate it if needed. So the Commodore Plus 4 PLAs are known to be absolute dog shit and die. They are, for reference, a 2516-41-02. So, I, after a lot of searching, I managed to download a .bin file of the thing and program it with the good old cheapo Chinese programmer and erase the original 512 chips. So, what you want is a C... Something similar to this, these all have the code on, but I was going to try the one more and find which one works. So this is a 27C512. Apparently they're quite fussy on the EEPROMs. So what you want to do is running here is can you see that? I want you to see the part number. So it uses a M27C512-15I1F1 or FI. This is important because some of these are a bit janky in Commodore 64s and whatnot. So the original process is back in there. It's hot. The ROMs are all hot. The RAM's fine, the little serial I.O. chip's fine, so I want to sort out a heatsink. I've actually got a heatsink that'll fit that in the cupboard. And then the TED graphics and a whole load of I.O. chip. The TED does a whole load of funky stuff, it does. But what you want to do, if you're going to do this, you want a C5, 27C512 chip. Then you want to use this schematic, which is part of this website. I will try and put all these links in the description. And to download it, I don't know if I still have the thing up on my laptop. No, I don't. Hang on. And the pinout between the Commodore 64 and the um, Plus 4 is the same, which is why this adapter works. Just use a standard chip socket and some wires. And as long as you've got an EEPROM programmer, which is a... Uh, TL86-8662+. Standard, you can get them on eBay. Apparently, the one version's getting kind of unobtaining, but it's good for older chips, so I need to get hold of one of those. So, for PLA.bin. Oh, I love it when fingers refuse to listen to brain. And the website you want... Oh, what? Why did it do that? What? It wasn't doing that earlier. Bizarre.
So basically this website. But how you navigate it, I don't know. Plus four. Archives, firmware, here we go, and it is PLA 256141-02 bin, I want to burn it to a 512k EEPROM because it's a 64k file, something like that anyway, it's whatever it is. Yeah, 64k for key, KB file, you times that by 8, you get 512. So yeah, I will put all the links to this in the description. And that is how you revive the PLA. This one was off an eBay seller. Because the actual genuine chips are kind of unobtainium and ridiculously expensive. But once you've done it, oh yeah, and this will hit the keyboard. You can run a test program to test it. This has become a bit of a favourite of mine to run lately. It crashes at 30 odd. There we go, 37. Same as the Amstrad CPC 464, actually, interestingly. So, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And the Plus 4 lives, which makes us very happy. I'm just going to heat sink all the chips now. So remember, the Commodore pinouts, I'll put all the links in the description.